Fleming Rasmussen, how is it going with you and in the wonderful world of producing? It's going fine. I just got back from work. Were you working very hard lately because it seems you've got always products on the go? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've been uh, uh, working in a new studio, which we're trying to get uh, promoted, and we're doing pretty well. Would you say throughout the years it's been getting uh, more, you know, work, more work coming in as all the time? Yeah, this last couple of uh, uh, months, at least this last half year, the last couple of years has been busier and busier. Now, something I've seen on your website is interesting. You've done over a thousand products, you know, or, or yeah. productions since 1976. Now, not much people can uh, achieve that. What do you think of that no. coming out, you know, from your hands and uh, ears? Yeah, well, uh, most of it is because I've always worked out of the same studio, so so the studio has attracted a lot of steady business and a lot of uh, steady customers. So there's I still work with people I've worked with for the last 30 years. And, of course, when you have that kind of client base, it's easier to attract work. But I'm getting a lot of work from uh, the Internet now, from Facebook and stuff like that, people who contact me on there. The reason they What? go to you is because you're a legend of in the producing yeah, world? because of uh, the, the Metallica albums I did, and people like the way they sound. And let's say when you when you go today, how how's your hearing throughout all these years to keep that tone coming out in albums, because in your eyes, um, I have this thing that people ask me what the best album I've ever done is. It's always the one I'm working on. I, uh, I when you work so much with music, you kind of find out what you like in the music and, and what you want to come out and that process is never the same so every day at work is like a new day I, I never do the same thing twice so that's probably it when you look at all that in the technology has changed throughout the years do you say that it's better now than it's ever been it's easier it's not necessarily well yeah it is slightly better actually We can do a lot of stuff today that we only dreamed about doing in the old days. And some of the stuff we did anyway in the old days takes much shorter time now. So, yeah, I think it's a lot better and and easier. The problem with it being easier is that a lot of people who doesn't know what they're doing right. is making albums. And unfortunately, we have to hear that. When you when you look at the products you're doing now, who's who you've been producing lately, and I'm sure you got a lot of products on the go right now. Uh, in, on the metal side, I've been doing an album with a Norwegian band called thrash band called Tantara. I just recorded a new Saturnus album, which is doom metal, and uh, that's been getting really good reviews all over the world. It's like 10 out of 10, so I'm pretty proud of that. And right now I'm doing a big Danish pop act, so it's, you know, a lot of different stuff. I don't only do metal, I do all sorts of music. I do rock, I do pop, I do everything. What does a legendary producer listen to on his own when you've got spare time? Uh, What do you not like? Not a lot, actually, because I'm pretty filled up with music when I come home. But I listen, you know, I listen to the most recent stuff, uh hits when some of my old favorites sends out a new album I listen to that but I listen to a lot of rock and roll music right now right now I'm listening to a lot of Rolling Stones because they just send out that 50 year thing right and it's kind of funny hearing some of that again and, it's, and some of it sounds really good who are some of your legendary producers that you look up to and say this is you know or your influences to becoming the great producer <sighs> Roy Thomas Baker, the guy who did all the Queen albums, uh, David Bowie, Peter Gabriel, people like that. Now, when you look at the drumming parts, like on certain, let's say, Metallica albums, even Morbid Angel, Covenant, the drumming that's been involved mm -hmm. in there with the miking, did you have a lot of input in, you know, how the miking should be into getting oh, yeah. these tones? Yeah, that's all my work.
So everybody that listens the, to this ha has to thank you, in a sense, to deliver yeah. these tones. Yeah, that's that's very much me. We went for a certain tone on, on all the Metallica things, and we, we, we worked hard to do that. Drums took a lot of time to do because we wanted the right tone, and that's a lot of that is me. Uh, and especially on the Morbid Angel album, I'd say a lot of that was me. Because a lot of people in the studio we worked in in Tampa, which does a lot of metal, they thought it would never work, and I knew it would. So, so yeah, that's me. And when you look in Morbid Angel history, Coven is their best-selling album and best-sounding album. Yeah. And, and it comes from you. Yeah, exactly. So that says a lot. Yeah, I'm really proud of that, and I think uh, I read somewhere that it's the most selling in that genre ever. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. I think it does sound really good. Oh, it's a it's a classic classic album. One question about miking amps and stuff. Like today, you you get the iPad and iPhones, and there's a thing called amplitude. They're delivering yeah. some new tones. Did you experiment in that with these little things? Uh, not so much yet, because I have kind of more the same kind of stuff, but in 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 more professional versions and Pro Tools. But yeah, I experiment with that a bit. Yeah. What's your point of view on uh, effects like that, like um, amp simulations and stuff coming out today? Some of them are really good. I don't use them that much. I am so old school that if I think the guitar sound is crappy, I throw them out through a real amp and record it again. I'd rather reamp them. But I use them on and off. Some of them are really good. I think the soft tubes versions are some of the best ones there is. When you go back to, say, Master of Puppets or Right Lightning for the drum tones, did you have a vision of this? recorded the uh, Master of Puppets and Right the Lightning in a really, really big room with a lot of mics in the room. So we had like four or six mics just pointing out in the room to get the room sound. And that was probably the first time you heard that on a metal album. And it's because I wanted that big sound. So yeah, and it, it actually made the recording a lot harder to do because um, it was winter and it was cold and tuning the drums was really difficult. Uh, so, but, you know, we did it anyway because we wanted that sound. And with that, was there still close miking on the drums at the same time? Mm, yeah, close miking and then a lot of, uh, in a really live room, and then a lot of room mics on top of that. So there's not a lot of artificial reverb on, on that's all the room they're standing in that sounds like that. So technically to get that sound you'd have to go in the same room again? Yeah. And that's impossible because if that room is now apartments. Wow. Somebody is living in, in, in somebody has a living room where last recorded like the lightning and master puppets. In all your career, would you have ever imagined, you know, to be responsible for selling so many albums, you know, to get the sound of no. these great bands? No. No. It came as a big... Well, actually, it wasn't a big surprise when it happened, but uh, it was not anything I expected. And, uh, but, you know, when it happened, it didn't surprise me because I thought the, the, the albums were so good. I think... Uh, uh, Song-wise and, and performance-wise, I think these are really good albums, so they deserve to sell that, that as much as they did, also with the Morbid Angel. Now, Fleming, throughout all the years, did you constantly work, or was there periods that you've uh, perhaps no, stopped a little worked. bit? I've been doing music all this time, since 1976. So I'm closing in on 40 years soon, and I'm still doing it. It takes a lot of dedication to uh, do all that. I like music. I really like music. Now, you've been a fan of music for all your life, mostly, since, yeah. since a yeah. kid. Yeah, when everybody else was uh, riding mopeds, I was play, playing with my tape recorder. So, yeah. Now, have you ever played music in a band and stuff like that and yeah, recorded? Yeah, I played drums for a short period of time. And has anything be ever released 
with Fleming Rasmussen nope, on? Never, never. No, it's just for fun. And then when I started recording, it took up so much of my time, so I, I dropped the drumming and just started recording. Now, do you have any gadgets yourself, like iPads and stuff like that? And if you do, do you use them to record certain mm, demos no. and in a way you go right no, to the big, no, no, big equipment? No, no, none of that. I have it, but I'm not using it. No, I'm. Um, uh, I, I've always had a studio available, so whenever I wanted to do stuff like that, I just went into the studio, you know, at night time or whenever somebody, whenever it was free and there was nobody there. Now, Fleming, let's say in the wonderful world of uh, internet, we're in the internet age mm -hmm. now, what do you think of that, you know, destroying the CD sales and stuff like that? It, it, I you think find it's horrifying, but mostly because of the bad quality of the stuff you download. If only you could get like a format that also sounded good. I never listen to MP3s. I think they think they sound like crap. So you know, CD quality. That's the lowest I go when I when I bounce anything down to iPods or iPads. It's it's at least 16-bit 44.1k, and never listen to MP3s. It it makes me feel bad. What's your view on vinyl versus CDs? I love vinyl. Uh, I've grown to love CDs also, but there's something about vinyl and the way they sound that's, that I kind of like. It also, unfortunately, when you get to the inner tracks, kind of fucks up the sound too much, so, so I've kind of liked the consistency of the sound on CD that it's, no matter where you are on the album, it sounds good. So I've grown to love CDs. I wasn't too happy when they came out. I thought they sounded bad, but I'm getting used to it. Also, because I think people are getting better and better to to mix to the digital format, and has been for a long time. But you know, the first couple of years CDs came out, I didn't like them. But now I think uh, I I like the way CDs sound, and because just compared to MP3s, which is crappy quality. Um, but if if I had to pick, I'd rather have it on vinyl. Of course. Me as well. Love vinyl. The sound. <laughs> it it's really way cool. different. I have like three record players. So. You carry a big collection of vinyl? I have a lot of them. I have about a thousand. Awesome. Most of them are like old stuff that I've done. And, you know, stuff I've bought from in the old days. And some of the stuff I've done when it get re-released on vinyl, I always make sure I get one. So let me let me ask you a question. What's your point or uh, your take on mastering today? Like um, I do mastering myself. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm not too keen about everything being squashed so much, but um, I do it myself, and I kind of make sure it doesn't get all busted. You find that there's a big art in mastering. I know a lot of people just want it to be as loud as possible, but I'm not agreeing on that. I think you should try to uh, to keep the integrity of, of the mix and the way the band wants to sound, not just being really loud. I think a lot of albums probably have been destroyed by bad mastering, but, you know, then again, I'm pretty sure people do the best they can. Right. And also, it seems anybody can be mastering now with their uh, programs yeah. on their computers. On their computer, yeah, with their Pro Tools, yeah. And back in the old days, mastering was a real, real science. When mastering you look in the old days was a real science, yeah, and the good mastering engineers. But it's the same thing today. If you go into a good mastering studio in New York, you get a lot better sound than if you go anywhere else. So I recommend that. The importance of hearing, you know, as a producer or as a mastering engineer, how important yeah. is the hearing and what you're hearing, you know? It's number one. You need to have a pair of speakers that you know and that you trust. It doesn't matter that everybody else thinks they maybe sound like crap as long as you know what's happening when you listen to stuff on the speaker and then of course you have to make sure you haven't fucked your hearing. Which I think very few uh, studio technicians have because they're always in control of the volume so, so if it's too loud they just turn it down. And as far as I know, my hearing is perfect. Let's say uh, when you take an, an album you've just done or it's still in demo stages or whatever, do you compare it to a different sounding stereos, like let's say a cheap car stereo 
and yeah. her mono system, you know, just to yeah, see yeah. the best I mix. Always mix oh, I always check it while I mix on uh, a lot of different speakers on an old Ghetto Blaster and stuff like that. And then it gives Bad you speakers. that good idea of what it's going to actually sound yeah. like. car stereo. <laughs> Go check it in the car, that's always a good test. Yeah, and and, and the tires going, the, no the noise everywhere, you know? Exactly, yeah. Anything else we should know uh, for 2013 with Fleming Rasmussen? Mm, um, yeah, well, I'm still working, and if people want to work with me, send me some stuff, and I'll see if I like it, and if I like it, I'll do it. Well, Fleming, I really appreciate you taking this time. It's a very good honor to talk to uh, the legendary producer that produced so Thank much great so much. albums. Thank you so much. All right, talk to you again another day. You bet. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.